Hi everyone, how's it going? I uh, got a new mic this time. I uh, wanted to say welcome to episode eight of Real Estate Talk with Randy Steadwell. Uh, that logo is not very good with Randy Steadwell. There you go. Uh, <laughs> anyways, um, with that being said, we have our guest of honor, which is Malcolm Turner. Malcolm Turner is a um, commercial real estate, commercial um, commercial lender. And so for all of you guys out there doing multifamily, you want to use him. Uh, not only for the lending portion, but also to help underwrite a deal, in my opinion. So I think he can help you tremendously in this. Uh, so with that being said let's welcome malcolm turner malcolm how are you doing i'm great how are you oh i'm doing awesome so got the new mic you got the first episode with the new mic here so <laughs> you know cool. before it was just my airpods <laughs> so um but i wanted to uh so you're a commercial lender is that correct right. that's correct so with that um, how can real estate professionals use you uh, as far as uh, being a being a broker and things like that? Uh, in, the, in the context of a real estate uh, agent or a broker, um, they can call me if they have a deal that they want to pre-qualify for financing. Okay. You know, okay. um, in the introduction, you mentioned uh, multifamily. Yes. And when you're doing commercial, the focus shifts from the uh, person to the property. Okay. So 80% of the underwriting is on the property. Yeah. And about 20% is on the person. Okay. You know, so I'm looking at um, like example, I was talking with an investor this morning about their multifamily deal. And I was saying, Hey guys, I need the leases because yep. I don't care about your W2s cause you're not making the payment. I need the leases on this property so that I can see what kind of income is coming in when the leases expire. Uh, are they month to month? You know, that kind of thing, you know? So yeah. cause, cause the, the property becomes preeminent when you're dealing with uh, commercial, whether it be retail, office, warehouse, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's, it's the same, same bucket. Okay. That's awesome. So, you know, uh, I, I just kind of jumped right into that. Um, but I, you know, so the good thing is, is that I, I kind of wanted to let people know out there that you're the person to go to for any multifamily or commercial loan lending. Mm -hmm. um, also, any commercial buildings, I highly recommend go through you as well. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't know what you're doing, if you don't know what you're talking about, if you're another wholesaler that has a deal under contract and you need a second pair of eyes to underwrite it, by all means, this is the guy to talk to because mm -hmm. he will tell you whether there's a deal there to be had um, or not, or if you need a, sh in order for the deal to be had, you need a strong buyer for them right. to be able to lend. Okay. Um, things like things of that nature. Now, um, let's kind of get back to back on track here. So how did you get started in, um, in the financial industry and how did that lead you to real estate? Well, um, I was doing um residential well you say real estate you have to go way back um, <laughs> <laughs> um i got my real estate license when i was uh 2021 20, okay something like that you know working for real estate one which is actually how i met my wife because okay. i worked out of the real estate one office in uh, lathrop village and she worked out of the real estate office in detroit real uh. estate one office in detroit and just, you know, give you a little comparison. This is in 1988, um, 89, something, somewhere around in there. 
Okay. And um, interest rates for a 30 year fixed rate mortgage was 9.75% for a 30 year fixed. And we're you complaining know, about six or seven percent. People are losing their mind. <laughs> oh, for, right. Six, seven. Oh my God. Eight percent. Oh, oh, it's like, come on, man. You know, now, now here's, here's the irony. Back then, when I when I met my wife, they had a big company meeting where they brought all the respective branch offices together, in one big uh, whole meeting at a hotel in Southfield. Yep. Because real estate won that year for the first time in their history crossed one billion dollars in sales one billion i'm sorry i had to and they, were like, hey. they were like yeah we're like the biggest the best in the and they, and they were the biggest in the state i don't know yep. what the numbers are now okay. but they were like yeah we're killing it next year's gonna be even better and this is in a 9.75 percent interest rate environment we were selling real estate like crazy and so someone asked me the other day you know, as an investor, Malcolm, you know, you're looking at rates and things like that and where things are going and, you know, when is the best time to buy? When you find a deal. Yes. Because if I'm a, if I'm an investor, I'm an investor. It's what I am. Yep. Right. I invest in real estate. So mm -hmm. should I buy this multifamily? And this is 2023. Would have been better for me to have bought it 10 years ago, 20 mm -hmm. years ago, 30 years ago. You know, yes, there's been some ups and downs, obviously, you know, in the market yeah. on a month to month, quarter to quarter, year to year basis. But if you got it 10 years ago, you're probably pretty good right now. Yep. You know, now if you bought it two months ago, that, that might be a different story. Right. So you're a long term investor. You buy for the long term. Mm -hmm. You know, when should you buy when you can get a good deal, you know, or when the deal even makes sense? Because sometimes you can't always kill it on every deal. That is you know? true. That is true. Yeah. Sometimes you got to go for Not every deal is going to be a smoking deal. You right. know, that's right. That's right. And, and I'll, I'll show you a little bit how I work. I had a guy call me. Um, this was uh, Friday. Um, uh, no, 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 no. This was um, not, not this Friday. Well, this was the Friday before last. And he was calling me from um, Washington, uh, D.C. area. Okay. You know, it was a referral. Um, one of his buddies who also invests in Detroit from the D.C. area. And he was trying to buy this property. This property was in um, Pennsylvania. It was actually, he, he's in D.C., but it was in York, Pennsylvania. Okay. Right. And the listing price was $499. Um, I forget how many. It was a small, I want to say maybe... 10, 12 units. It was, okay. it was a small multifamily. Okay. So he said, yeah, me and my realtor, we went ahead and offered 425. And so, you know, I was hoping I could catch you this morning, but I couldn't wait. So we're putting the offer in at 425. And I'm like, okay, so what's the number? So we went over the NOI, mm -hmm. right? And I said, okay, the cap rate that they're selling this property at is um it was like 8.63 percent okay okay but i asked him did you double check the numbers and he's like yeah. well, what do you mean i says, well you know in the offering memorandum they said here's our expenses right here's our income and then here's our net down here but did you actually do your own math would you just mm -hmm. assume that total was right because a lot of times it's not and he's like no i didn't so he did the math and it was 10 grand off right okay right so okay well you know 10 grand is 10 grand you know so yep. we did the math based on that cap rate. it's like okay well that should drop the price down to 399 then we found another uh error in the operating agreement where they didn't account for a vacancy loss which mm -hmm. should be five percent yep right and there was a there was a one other thing which i can't remember and property management that, um no, it wasn't property management. That was actually in there. But anyway, mm -hmm. it dropped the uh, NOI further. You know, okay. I, I want to say like 34000 31000 somewhere in there. And so I said, now, based on their cap rate that they initially was offering this property at, you should be offering three fifty two. Yeah. He's like, holy crap. 
you know, the other lenders I talked to just wanted me to throw in an application. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you can throw in an application if you want to. You know, at 425, I mean, you did, but I don't see how the value's there. And, you know, just as from an investor perspective, I mean, it's your, you know, it's your decision. But let's even look at it cash flow. Mm-hmm. So I was going strictly from a sales approach. Yeah. Right. So when I said, okay, based on uh, a 30 year amortization, because you can get a fully amortized 30 year loan on a multifamily. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I just did a, a, a I calculated the, the, the debt service on that. And it was like, oh man, it's bar- you're barely making like 700 bucks a month. Because he, he had all that other stuff. Yeah. So it was like 700 bucks a month at 352. Why buy a 10 unit then? Right. So I said, now, is this property under market relative to rents? Yeah. And he was like, oh, yeah, absolutely. And it had a, it had a um, first, uh, the first floor of the building was retail. So it had mm-hmm. three units of commercial. Okay. Right. One of them was at market rate. The other two was substantially under. Okay. Right. So he's like, well, once I get those up to full market, you know, that would be like half my um, cash flow all by itself. Yeah. Which is actually not that uncommon when you have what we we call mixed use. Yep. Right. Um, And so I said, okay, what about the uh, residential units? He was like, oh, yeah, they're under market, too. Now, based on market rates, Mm -hmm. he gets that rent up. Okay, now the value is at four ninety nine. Mm-hmm. But you're not going to pay a premium for exactly. what you, what's going on now. Exactly. So now you after you do all the work, now you're paying the price of after you do all the work. And as some of your 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 viewers may know, a lot of sellers will say, "Well, when you get done." Yeah, rehabbing this place or changing the rent rollover, yeah, or you know, raising the rents. Oh yeah, it'll be worth this. It'll be worth two million dollars. Yep. Yeah, but I'm not paying you two million dollars now. Exactly. <laughs> it's not that you know that's my equity. Yep. Right. If it's so wonderful, you do all that stuff. Mm-hmm. You put all that money and time and work effort in, and then you get it to two million. You know, because yeah. the the question that I would think as an investor, I would think, well. If it's all of that, why didn't you just do it? If it was so easy. Exactly. Right? Oh, it's you didn't want to do it. Okay, well, if you didn't do it, then that means I've got to, so therefore I deserve to get paid. Yep. Right? But the thing just didn't cash flow anything above that 352 number. And whether it's worth buying or not gets to after I get it cash flowing, after right. I turn over that rent roll. Is there opportunity for growth? The answer was yes. Yeah. Okay. So as a lender, I have to underwrite it as it is. Mm-hmm. I can't yeah. underwrite it for, at four ninety nine. No. You know, and this hundred, and this this property, by the way, was one hundred percent full. Okay. So this was not a property that was beat up, torn up. Yeah. You know, it wasn't that kind of situation. Well, it probably was just with tenants in it. So. <laughs> You know, old old tenants. <laughs> right, right, right. But physically, the property was in good shape. It didn't need okay. any. You know, it didn't need it. it had, according to him, it didn't have a lot of deferred maintenance at all Got that it. he could see. Right. So, but that's where we sort of did a deep dive, and then he's like, "Well, man, my realtor is going to be upset." Right. And <laughs> and I just sort of said to him, "Well, let me ask you a question." I was like, "Okay, you're looking at three ninety nine. Now we're yeah. looking at, excuse me, four ninety nine. Now we're down to three fifty two. You know, as a lender, is it better for me at four ninety nine or three fifty two? He's like, well, I would think it'd be four ninety nine because the loan amount is bigger. I was like, yeah, exactly. So I just cost myself money. I'm a terrible loan officer, <laughs> right? And then we just laughed and, and just, yeah. you know. It joked about that, right? But at the end of the day, me wasting his time taking an application on a bad deal 
when I could have sat there and literally in 15 minutes, 10 minutes, mm -hmm. do the math and say, does this make sense? Yes. Right. B versus taking a loan application. He spent the money on due diligence for a deal he shouldn't even be looking at for five seconds.